Hi, welcome to the Earth Science Classroom. Today we're in volcanoes. We're in the volcano unit and looking at the types of volcanoes. Previous videos on stratovolcanoes, shield, and cinder or scoria cone. And now today we're looking at caldera of volcanoes. So this is going to go through the what, it, what they are, where they form, how they form, different types uh, of formations based on the magma and the actual volcano and the terrain and topography and the uh, edifice of the volcano and the examples of where they are around the world. So what is it? So a caldera is a volcanic type of volcano. So we have our, our regular classic stratos, the steep sides and also called composites. We had the very wide and tall shield volcano. We have very small but in clusters. We have cinder or scoria cones. We also get the lava domes, which are very small, but they're very thick and viscous. We also get the parasitic cones as well and the fissures. But a caldera is something a little bit different. Now, calderas can form on shields. They can also form on stratos. They can also have the occasional lava dome. They don't usually have many cinder or scoria uh, volcanoes around, but calderas comes from the Spanish word for cauldron or cooking pot. Just like a shield, it's based on what it looks like. So you can have a volcano complex, right? Here's, here's my volcano. Uh, the slopes would increase in gradient, and then up to the summit there, and then we have, again, this very large complex. So you'd have your magma chamber down here, the central conduit, and obviously larger the strato composite, so you get a larger complex or system of conduits and pipes leading off the main magma chamber. And you'd have some flank eruptions and some lava domes or parasitic cones form on the flanks, but you have this general strato volcano. Now, a caldera is where you would have there's two ways to form a caldera really. Two ways. The first way, imagine this is full up to the brim of magma. So it's an active volcano. It's on the brink of erupt uh, magmatic earthquakes. There's tremors. There's some landslides. There's some funerals of gas. You know, basically ready to go. And somehow, some way, the magma is drained. Is drained back down into the earth, into the atmosphere, hot spots, plume. Maybe it's gone away back into the asthenosphere. And this would leave, this would erase it, this would leave the magma chamber empty of magma. It would, be, it would become an empty chamber and be void of space. And we refer to this as the under pressure, one word. So it's how much pressure this area is exerting on the rock above it or below it. And the overlying rock obviously is too heavy so this solid could be, or well, the strato would be mostly uh, diorites, andesite, maybe some granite, mostly granite maybe. Okay, I'll see some rhyolite. And these are all pretty dense, pretty heavy rocks, and the above area will collapse in. So the main thing is, what is it, a caldera? It is a collapsed summit of a volcano. So this rock has all collapsed in into this, this empty magma chain. And the other way, so the first way would be just be to remove the magma. And the other way is the more fun way, is the huge, massive eruption. So the explosive, very short duration, very high energy eruption, where all of this, uh, basically the whole edifice uh, of the volcano, that's the shape, the part you see the surface, all of this would be basically part of the eruption and it will just be erupted up in the sky, blown to smithereens and ejected out into the atmosphere as part of the ash cloud and pyroclastic material and maybe part of the uh, pyroclastic flow. Just all of this ejected material. And if you link it up to a VEI scale, this would be a very large VEI based on the amount of material erupted and that would be like a seven or eight. So a very large eruption. And again, once that magma has erupted through these vents here, the small vents, the main conduit through the central vent up here, or the summit, or come this way, the whole thing is exploded. What's left is this. This diagram kind of shows you the, the outcome, the result of a very large eruption 
where the majority of the volcanic summit, the volcano complex, is blown up with the with the eruption with the ejected material, and that's the dashed lines. You can see what's left is this kind of like bowl-shaped, kind of very large semicircle here, where the the weight of the rock has basically collapsed, and this is called a depression. It's called a depression, and this creates this nice this nice shape, and the rim of the caldera will kind of simulate or, or show or highlight how wide or the width of that caldera is, and that can change. So to be a caldera, it has to be bigger than one kilometer in width. If it is smaller than one kilometer, it is called a collapsed pit. Collapsed pit. If it was bigger, it's called a caldera. But Obviously, anything, you know, it could be 1.1, or it could be as big as 95. So the biggest one we've recorded so far or found is in the Philippines, and that's basically over 100 kilometers wide, between 93 miles wide, which is insane. Let's add this in here. There we go. So explosive eruption, VEI 7 to 8, generally. So you have this very large eruption. So two ways to form it, and this is what it looks like once it's formed, the depression, and you have this lack of under pressure that allows this, this collapse to occur. Now when we talk calderas, there are five main types of calderas, and they are the different types basically. And obviously the, the structure of the depression can change. The way or the method of eruption can change, shape, and the size of the magma chamber in which the rocks are going to fall into would change and obviously create a different type. The five types are going to be this. First, you've got the funnel. So this is a, uh, the red is the magma chamber, so it's deeper magma chamber, deeper in the crust of the sphere and also you've got a smaller caldera. So based on how deep it is, if it's deeper, then it will fall less in, or size as well would affect this, and it forms this funnel type of a caldera. So it's not, not very wide, it could be deep. So next is downside. This happens in uh, Hawaii a lot, is with this very large shield volcanoes, where you have um, a very slow, what's called substance, substance, which is more of a slow moving with gravity down and the depression is created slowly. So it's very slow over a long period of time and it can be very hard to detect unless you have monitors, satellites and lasers and infrared, that kind of stuff, where you can actually get a more clearer picture of what happens over a long period of time than just your visual eyesight. So again, very large volcanoes and shield volcanoes would have this. This one's got a really cool name, it's called Trapdoor, and where you have the magma chamber via a regular shape, so it's asymmetrical, it's a weird shape, and you'd have this depression going down a certain angle, a certain part of the caldera, and you'd have this area still kind of raised up, um, you know, so maybe like this part of the magma chamber starts to empty first, and then this one is still kind of has the magma in it. So you have a, a different or multi-stage part to this, this caldera formation. It's called Trapdoor. Really cool. And this one's called Piecemeal. Now, I'm guessing there's some sort of logical reason for a scientist of amazing brain power to name this Piecemeal, but I don't. It's just fine for me. But uh, Trapdoor's cool. Downside, I get funnel, uh, shape. Piecemeal, not so sure, but I didn't make it up. So piecemeal is where you have a multi-stage eruption or emptying of the magma chamber. This is very large, magma chamber very wide, and each part of the of the crust or the surface of the volcano, like here, this would be a different stage of depression or moving down compared to this one over here. So at different times and different amounts and stages we have this collapse, uh, this part, bit by bit collapse of the caldera, forming this uneven surface, whereby maybe it's the, the rock weight, or the composition, or the magma chamber being emptied at different stages, and different parts and areas, based on the width, perhaps. So 
a lot of things, a lot of factors can come into it, but piecemeal, that's basically a broken up multi-stage caldera. So the best to last, the fifth type of caldera is the piston or plate, whereby you get this instant, immediate, very large eruption, the emptying of, of the magma chamber, and you get this consistent, at the same time, same area, same basically symmetry of collapse and depression, depression and collapse over a large area, and the the bowl or the, the cauldron is created. So this is basically what the, the classic caldera looks like. And these other four over here on the right-hand side are like the variations of this formation. But the piston one is the most classic form with that very large eruption. All right, so let's start with the most kind of unknown uh, examples. In terms of unknown, basically everyone knows that Hawaii is a shield volcano, but also as part of that complex with Kilauea, Maloa, you have a couple of calderas that form on Hawaii are based on subsidence, which is a slow compression over time, uh, that uh, down drag, that uh, down sag example. And again, it's not as clear, but it's part of a larger shield of volcano system. Then you got Crater Lake. Crater Lake is well known, uh, but it is in Oregon, on the west coast of the United States. And it is a a beautiful, picturesque lake. It was created by Mount Mazama and erupted 7,000 years ago, roughly. Very large eruption. And it is about 5.5 miles wide. So we use that one kilometer in excess of that one kilometer to be a caldera, but I like to use miles. So five and a half miles wide is Crater Lake. Then we get La Garita. La Garita in uh, Colorado. So again, an American state, a uh, uh, very large caldera. This one is 22 miles wide. So this one erupted about 26 million years ago, and a uh, yeah, large, large caldera. Then we get to Long Valley, California. So it's Cali right there. Now Long Valley is basically next to Mouth Mountain, all right? And it's 20 miles, so just a bit shy of Lagarita, all right, in Colorado. Still a very large uh, caldera in its own right. Then we get to classic. Now, I always go to this one because it's like part of the movies and, and it's you know, National Park is built on it, but Yellowstone is that classic study, an amazing example. Now, Yellowstone National Park is beautiful, but it's 43 mile wide caldera. It's insanely large with the three very famous eruptions 2.1, 1.3 million years ago, and 640,000 years ago. Very, you know, world-changing, very uh, large eruptions, BEI-8s on the scale. Again, very large caldera, and it's put a national park on it, which is fantastic. Then we get the largest. This is recently found by satellite, by a scientist, uh, off the coast, to meet in the ocean, in the Philippine Sea, on this rise off the uh, island of Luzon uh, in the Philippines, uh, Apoloke caldera. And this one is officially the largest in the world measured at 93 miles in diameter, so twice the size of the Yellowstone, and it's on the Ring of Fire, same as Crater Lake as well, so it has the potential to be always fed by subducting plates and magma creation, so there's always that threat of a reignition of this massive caldera, but yes, it's recently been found, and it's absolutely huge. This is the Earth Science Classroom. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. Uh, check out more videos on our channel. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you again.